Hey everyone, in this tutorial, we're going to take a look at a CG pencil rendered out of Cinema 4D into After Effects, and we're going to show how you can texture it using Paint and Stick directly in After Effects. This is the shot without Paint and Stick. Here's the shot with a subtle wood grain added on. This is what actually aired in the Intel spot, created by Cause and Effect. And because this is the tutorial, here's what we'll be creating today. We're going to throw subtlety to the wind and overdo the grunge so we can explore a wider range of painting techniques. Let's get started. So let's go down to the lowest level of this comp. And uh, just to show how I have this set up, uh, this is the pencil comp right here. And in After Effects, I'm rendering depth of field, so I'll just solo that to show. Uh, here's the depth of field layer. And also motion blur, I'm just using uh, keyframes so I can uh, control how this pencil blends to the real pencil. And the reason why I'm doing depth of field and motion blur in After Effects instead of Cinema 4D is that the render is a lot faster out of Cinema 4D when I don't have those, and it's a lot more flexible to control both of these in After Effects. And here's the pencil shot. So one thing that would be really helpful is uh, to take the shot and lock it off here, and then go into the pencil comp, and put these side by side, so we can always see what the final result is uh, next to what we're painting. The best part about painting in Paint and Stick is looking at the final composition while you're applying textures so you know exactly what you're going to get. I found this wood texture online, and I want to use it to put some grooves into the pencil. So first let's use color correction, uh, because we want the white part to be unaffected and the black part to be fully affected, and uh, in this case, this is gray. So we can go to Levels, that looks pretty good, and for the time being I'm going to use Multiply, and I'll rotate this into place, scale it down, and this is a cool button, this is uh, Preserve Underlying Transparency, so this is just going to make sure it only contributes color to this composition and uh, none of it's alpha. To repeat this, I'll go to Effect. Stylize, Motion Tile, and I'm going to bring out the uh, output width, so that's going to repeat it. And then I'll mirror the edges. Because of the depth of field, it shouldn't really be a problem that this texture repeats. Maybe I'll just drag it down a little bit. Alright, so right away that's helping a lot. But one of the things I like to do is I really don't often like to multiply something. I have another trick. Let's use this as a luminance mat for color correction. So uh, I'm just going to take a snapshot here. So I'll go to Layer, New Adjustment Layer, and I'm going to turn off uh, Preserve Underlying Transparency, and uh, take this Adjustment Layer, put it underneath, and now when we take a look at this, um, see how this layer here, um, we want to affect the areas that are black and not affect the areas that are white. So we can use Luma Mat Inverted, and that's what that's going to do. And let's put on a Curves. And we'll just darken this a little bit. And at first glance, this is going to look a lot like when we were multiplying. But that's the nice thing about using the Adjustment Layer. Let's go to Color Correction, Hue and Saturation, and saturate the image a little bit. Okay, so take a look how these grooves look a lot nicer now, and let's just compare that with the snapshot. And another thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a marker. Let me just delete this marker. I'll just press Shift-1 here and create a marker uh, with the Mark-1. And I'm just going to mark the frame on the comp at which I'm using this wood in this adjustment layer. So that way we know which frame we want to stick on. Next, let's add just a little bit of detail to this red band, because it looks very uniform. I'm going to take this orange paint layer here, scale this down. And I think I can use this section. I'll press G to pull out my pen. And let's just do a really ugly key and try to isolate this orange. Let's go to Effect, Keying, Color Range, and just uh, sample some of the colors that we want to get rid of. Okay, good enough. This can be a little bit muddy. And now let's unsolo this. And let's place this up here and uh, sort of just rotate it into place. 
and let's put this underneath the reflection. So let's just go through this comp right now. Now might be a good time to do it. Here's the raw pencil render. Here's this orange paint layer. Here's the reflection over the top. And here's that wood adjustment layer. And then of course we have this matte layer, which is uh, cutting everything. So I'm just going to solo this matte layer for one moment. This was just rendered out of Cinema 4D. And is being used with uh, Stencil Alpha. And this can go at the top to apply the alpha to everything beneath it. So back to this orange paint layer. Let's use a hue adjustment. You'll notice that we didn't make this too clean, but it also didn't matter because it's, it's supposed to be a little bit rough. Plus, we'll correct it later when we stick it. So I'm going to rotate the hue. And I'll throw a curves on there. Okay, cool. I think that's looking pretty good. And then maybe I'll just uh, duplicate this layer and uh, solo it for a moment. Try to find another strip that I can cut out. Maybe this right here. And I'll just rotate that into place. Alright, that makes it look pretty interesting. And then the last layer of wear and tear I'm going to add on here is this uh, cracks layer. So this I think I'm just going to overlay, and I'm going to uh, put this under the mat right here, and set this to um, overlay. Overlay works pretty well when it's uh, using a gray object, so if I solo that, what it does is it's going to make the white areas brighter, and the black areas darker. And I'll shrink this down. And what we want out of this texture is only to have it in a couple of areas. So let's jump right into paint and stick. Alright, so I'll press Ctrl Y and make a new solid and go to Effects, A Scripts and Plugins, Paint and Stick, choose a frame location if you haven't already. And I'm going to choose a soft brush. I'll hide show brush and cursor, and I'm going to turn on real-time drawing by clicking this button or pressing D rather than fast draw. Oh, and I'll hide show brush and cursor. Now I'm going to take this cracks layer and set it to alpha matte for this uh, white solid. So now it's going to disappear because if we take a look at paint and stick, there's nothing on that layer. And I'm just going to hide paint and stick again. And now I'm just going to draw where I want to reveal a little bit of weathering. So I'll just draw a little bit here. So I'll just put a little bit up here. And I think that looks good, but I didn't overdo it. And last, I wanted to throw some text on here. So I just created this text layer, and uh, uh, an effect I use often is uh, rough and edges. So just inside of this comp, I have a text layer that says paint and stick. And then on this comp, I have a power pin, which is just kind of uh, distorting it in perspective with the pen. So if we take a look at those corners, just kind of bending this down a little bit, uh, changing the brightness of the white, and using rough and edges here to make the paint look a little bit less perfect. And while I'm looking at my final comp, maybe I'll just make this a tiny bit brighter, even though that would probably be a little bit less than realistic. We really want our eye to be drawn to that text. Alright, so let's just take a look at where we came from and where we are. Here's the before, and here's after. So now what we need to do is actually stick this paint down. So let's start out simple. Let's start with the text. I'm going to press Ctrl Y and create a new solid, and I'll call this text stick. And I'll go to Effects, A Scripts and A Plugins, Paint and Stick. And I'm going to source my Sticky Pass and my Sticky ID Pass, which are down in my comp, into the slots for Sticky Pass and Sticky ID Pass. I'm just going to jump over to Cinema 4D really quick and show you what those passes look like. So here's the shot in Cinema 4D. And uh, let me just solo this. This is the CG Pencil. To set up Paint and Stick, just go to Plugins and do the Paint and Stick Auto Setup. And that's all you have to do to get the paint and stick passes. So I'm using Octane Render, my favorite renderer. And when I render, so here's the render. And if we go into our layers, I'll just choose single pass. You can see we have our mask, our depth for the depth of fields. I didn't use this. The reflection pass, the diffuse pass, the sticky ID, which is hard to see, but I'll just uh, enable this filter, turn up the uh, exposure. And you'll see that it actually does have an ID color that's independent from the background. And the sticky pass. So that's all you have to do. 
Now, a lot of people ask me if they've already rendered how to just add on a uh, paint and stick pass without actually having to re-render all the stuff from Octane or whatever render you're using. That is possible, just go into the paint and stick tab, choose add paint and stick only render settings, and then render. Okay, so here's the sticky pass, and uh, I'm just going to play this along with the pencil render. I'll just put that at a lower opacity so you can see, because this sticky pass is lined up, and you'll notice that it is moving with this pencil, right? So hide this layer and just look at the sticky pass. You can indeed see that this pencil is moving. And here's the ID pass. You can see the ID color for the pencil and black for the background. So I'm going to hide both of those because we don't want to see those in the render at all. And let's go back to paint and stick. Choose the sticky pass and sticky ID. So the way paint and stick works is uh, you'll screen capture your paint to bring it into paint and stick as paint and then press the stick button to stick it down. So let's start with the text. We're going to solo our text, and I'll just turn off this background so you can see it, and then hold shift. Now see how it says capture screen as paint? Just click. And now this text is no longer needed. Uh, just for example's sake, I'll delete it, and you'll see that here on this paint and stick layer, this is now editable paint. If I press U, it is represented by a keyframe, and if you wanted to, uh, which I don't at this point, you could go in, and I'm just going to grab a brush, and you could erase this paint because it's part of Paint and Stick. Let me just undo that. By the way, I probably want to be using real-time preview because I'm compositing, so that will actually show my erase happening in real time, uh, rather than just drawing quickly. Uh, but that's for another tutorial. So anyway, I'm going to undo that deletion because I want to use this text layer later, but just showing that you don't actually need it. So with Paint and Stick selected, Press the stick button, and now I'm going to uh, solo this text stick layer, and solo the pencil render, and play it back. And you'll see that that paint is stuck to the pencil. So let's go ahead and do that with all of our other layers. What I can do to just be quick about it is I'll uh, duplicate this layer here, and I'll just call this uh, red paint. And I'll select paint and stick, and I'm just going to uh, use this button to delete all of the stuck paints. So let me just solo this for a moment so you can see. Here's the stuck paint. And I'll just press that button, now it's cleared. The reason why I duplicated it was that I already had these passes sourced, rather than making a new solid, reapplying, and then resourcing them. Let's solo our orange paint layers here. Hold shift, and then click. And again, I have this frame marked, so I know the frame that we stuck these from, and I'm just going to turn these off in case we want to use them again later. And let's take a look at the comp. So I have this red paint layer here, and I'll select paint and stick. And actually what I can do is, uh, if I wanted to make any tweaks to this, now would be a good time, because this is paint. So I'll press E to pull out my eraser. And I can just paint away any of the areas that I want to get rid of. All right, and I'm just using a textured brush, that way it doesn't look, you know, too smooth. Just a little bit of jaggedness in there. And then I'll press the stick button. So now I'm just going to hide the uh, other layer that's not stuck yet and play this back. So you can see that paint is stuck. And now let's take a look at this wood layer. Again, I'm going to duplicate paint and stick here, put it over the top of the wood, rename it, delete the stuck paint, Solo the wood, screen capture, press stick, and now I'm going to replace that wood layer with uh, this layer here, and I'm going to hide both of them because uh, the one over this uh, adjustment layer is uh, used as a mat, so you don't want to see it. Alright, let's move on to the cracks layer. Duplicating paint and stick one more time. I'll put it over the top of this cracks layer. Delete the paint. Show the cracks layer and solo it. Shift click to screen capture. Press stick to stick it down. Hide the cracks layer. Show the paint and stick layer. This looks crazy, and that's because it's supposed to be on overlay, like this cracks layer was. So just select that. Set it to overlay, and play it back. 
All right, that's pretty easy. Let's check out the final shot. All right, there's the shot. And uh, just like that, it's looking a lot better. And of course, we remain flexible. If we needed to change any of this, the great thing is this is all in our comp. So for example, if we want to change the color of our text, we can just add an effect to that. And we can see all those changes without having to re-render from Cinema 4D. This is also great for versioning. So for example, if I wanted to say thanks cause and effect, which was the studio that I worked for to make this shot and the studio that allowed me to use this footage for this tutorial, I could do that. And again, let's line it up. We'll just show that text right there. Again, I'll go back to that frame. Maybe scoot that over a little bit so cause and effect is more in focus. Okay, so the previous part of the tutorial was done with Paint and Stick 1.55 because that's the version that's currently available. Uh, but we're also launching a Paint and Stick 2.0 beta, and uh, this is Paint and Stick 2.0, and you'll notice it has the ability to live stick a composition. So let me just show you how you would do that really quickly. So we have our text stick layer, and just let me solo this. Uh, I'm going to uh, delete the paint here. So that's just deleting all the sticky data. And then I have my text layer. Let me solo that and hide this. So uh, what you have to do first is you have to pre-compose this so it's the same size as the composition. So pre-compose, move all attributes into the new comp. Yeah, text is fine. We'll just call it text. Okay, and then you can just hide it so it's not visible. Obviously, don't delete it. And go to Live Stick Layer and choose Text. So then we have this uh, Live Stick button here, and we'll click that. And now the composition itself is stuck. So let's just uh, go through here. We're going to keep uh, viewing this, and let's see what's going on. So inside this composition, this is all you see here. And uh, just for example sake, I'm going to make a uh, new solid. And I'll apply a paint and stick, uh, not for any demonstration purposes, but just for drawing purposes. And I'll scribble around like that. And you'll see that that paint is uh, sticking to the pencil. So that's what's happening is it's feeding live from this composition into this composition. So I'll delete that because that looks ridiculous. And then of course, inside here, you can edit this text uh, to whatever. And of course, you can see this uh, appear in real time, and we can nudge this over to get it you know, more properly into place. And we can even have this animate too. So for the laziest animation I can think of, I'm just going to have this uh, animate with a little color change. And just for giggles, let's uh, have this text right on. There's a typewriter preset. Let's just put this on here. At the beginning of the shot, we'll have it off. And then over like 10 frames, we'll have it on. So now heading over to this composition, I'm just going to play this really quickly. Thanks for watching. For more info, check out aescripts.com slash paint and stick.